Let's face it, Earth is doomed, and if we ever need a new home, Jupiter's moon Europa seems like the top contender. Or at least, that's what NASA said. But what if I told you Europa is already terraformed, blooming with lush greenery and teeming with the cute animals? Sounds perfect, right? Well, that's a dream Europa, the latest indie title, tries to sell. But does it deliver its promises of a searing exploration-focused adventure, or is it a bit too floaty for its own good? My name is Ebolan, welcome to another video, let's dive in and find out. Your pug greets you with a word that's nothing short of enchanting. It's like step into a Studio Ghibli film, with a vibrant meadows, majestic ruins, and skies that seems to stretch into infinity. Every frame looks like a painting you'd want as your desktop wallpaper. You play as Z, an android child exploring a terraformed Europa in search of answers about humanity's mysterious disappearance. The story is pieced together through a journal left behind by your father, an engineer who dreamed of creating a paradise here. It's a tale that starts predictably, terraforming gone wrong, a conflict with robotic gardeners, but soon takes darker, unexpected turns. The lore, while not groundbreaking, manages to pull at your heartstrings and adds depth the searing visuals. At its core, Europa is a 3D platformer with a focus on movement. You'll be running, jumping, gliding, and occasionally solving puzzles. And when it works, it feels magical. The gliding mechanic, covered by energy pockets called Zephyr, lets you soar through the air with a sense of freedom that's genuinely exhilarating. There are moments when you'll string together jumps and glides, barely touching the ground, and it feels like flying. But here's the catch. Europa struggles when it matters most. Its controls, Z movements are floaty and imprecise, making it frustrating to land jump or interact with objects. The camera constantly needs adjustment and sometimes Z grabs on things you don't want to or worse, refuses to grab what you need. Puzzles are simple and mostly act as a pace breaker rather than engaging challenges. You light torches, push blocks or collect glowing orbs to progress. They're not bad but they feel underwhelming in a world so visually rich. And then there's a the second half of the game. Out of nowhere, enemies are starting bombarding you with energy blasts. Z can't die, but getting hit repeatedly slows you down and disrupts the otherwise cozy vibe. It feels out of place, like the game suddenly remembered it needed action. Let's not forget what Europa does best its art and atmosphere. Helder Pinto, the game's creator, has crafted the world feels alive yet melancholy. The mix of mournful piano and strings adds to the meditative tone. The animals, from deer to alien creatures resembling living ecosystems, are fascinating to observe. And the photo mode is a blessing, allowing you to capture Europa beauty and keep it forever. Ultimately, Europa is an experience, not just a game. It's a piece of interactive art that invites you to slow down, explore, and reflect. But it's also held back by its imprecise controls and lack of depth in gameplay. For a three-hour journey, it offers moments of wonder and emotional resonance, but its flaws prevent it from reaching the heights it aims for. If you're looking for a short, beautiful escape, Europa is worth your time. Just don't expect it to redefine the genre or keep you coming back for more. So, is Europa the next must-play indie jam or just a fleeting curiosity? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more deep dives into indie games. Thanks for watching, my name is Ebolon and I'll see you in the next episode. Until next, peace.